doing is I am making my air supply line for my external paint booth. Um, we're going to go look at that in a minute, but what I'm doing is I'm hooking this up. I'm going to be able to hook this up from outside of the paint booth building. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to run a hard line to this building. I'll be able to take an air hose and hook it up to the air compressor itself and run it straight over to this fitting right here. And you can kind of see how it's going to go right here. Um, we're going to go through the wall here. This will be the wall. It will come through. Um, and on this end right here, what I'll have is I'll have an air nipple like this. So that will be sticking on the outside of the wall of the paint booth building. And then, of course, it will zigzag through here. And then once we go through here, what we'll do is we'll come back up and over to our air filter system. So here's my compressor room right here. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and tap a hole right here in the wall, somewhere in that area. And then I'll go ahead and tap my line into the air compressor and then I'll be able to hook my airline from there all the way over to here. So there'll be an air nipple on the wall right here where I'll be able to hook up air. And then it will come into the building right here where I put this piece of metal, this piece of uh, two and a half inch tubing. And then I'll mount everything onto this right here, which will include my spray gun, water and oil separator. And also to be on the safe side, we're gonna go ahead and add this extra filter, this water separator filter right here. So we're gonna have two filter systems going on the wall right in that area there. How's that insulation going? It's getting kind of toasty in here. It's getting kind of hot. Yeah. How's it going? I had to take my jacket off. I know. My hat off. Is that insulation working out good? Now, how are you putting that up? You want to show everybody how that works? Or? I am using a little trick he because showed me. I see you got this insulation up and it's not falling off it's the wall. It's not What's, falling off, yeah. What, what are we doing? Da -da -da. What's that? What do you got? Spray adhesive. Okay. You're just your regular old spray adhesive uh -huh. comes in a can. Right. Spray it on there. Spray it on the wall. Put it up there. And then it just stays up there on its own. It just some. stays up there waiting for me to put the metal on Let's top of it. Put the metal up. Okay. Yep. I notice it's a little bit thicker than what we wanted, but if you notice, it's not going to compress too. that much. Um, the thing about insulating a building is you don't want the insulation to compress. But we don't really have any choice on this because we got three, three and a half inch insulation and we got two and a half inch studs. All right, you want to go ahead and put one of those up just to show everybody how it works, or real quick. Okay, so what Minnie's going to do? She's going to take the uh, spray adhesive. Now this is 3M spray adhesive we're using, and then what she does is she sprays the whole area, the whole wall. So basically what she's saying is you're just putting a, uh, a tack coat basically to uh, hold it on there. Now the way that it should be done properly is you have to spray both 
uh, the insulation and the wall, then what happens? It becomes a... So you're doing a contact cement situation? Yeah. Now, how long is the insulation? Are you are you making it long enough where it goes up inside the ceiling there and it all yeah, touches? Yeah, I'm, I'm... About two inches? Or, yeah, okay. give or take, yeah. All right. Okay, so now do you have to wait for that to dry? Or, I mean, once uh, you spray it, it's pretty much ready to go? It's pretty much ready to go. The only thing okay. you want to be careful is you don't want to touch anything else because then this will stick and pull off. And yeah. It'll be a big mess. So far... That hasn't happened Everything's yet. Everything's working out all right. We want it, and then I just fold the top back just a little bit so that I can stick, stick it, up it up under. There you go. And then you want to make sure it's up against, tied up against that stud, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah. And then exactly. basically, bam, you're done. Uh huh. Wow. There you go. Down here, you want to be careful. Don't just stick it. Uh -huh. Because it's not where it wants should be. Right. You got to move it over. Make sure it's then, where you want it. And then push it up on there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So our paint booth's coming together. Minnie's getting the insulation in. I'm putting the airline in. This is going to be our air supply wall right here. And then uh, we're going to be running the electrical on this, on the outside of the wall. Uh, and when we get to that, I'll show you that. We're not going to uh, hide all the electrical. Um, and I think it's all going to work out really, really nice. We got okay, what we're doing is we're putting our electrical in our paint booth building now. I'm going to go ahead and explain it one more time. This is going to be a simple, easy situation. We're not getting exotic with it. I'm going to have an exhaust fan. I'm going to have lights. And i got my air over on that wall over there. So come on out here. Let me show you what's going on. i got a 30-amp RV hookup. Okay, this is an RV plug. Of course, the plug isn't in here. You can see a picture of what it looks like here. And then we got that wired up in the building. All right, so this goes inside the building, up, all the way around, over to the breaker box, the all-in-one 400 amp. Then, if we look over here behind many, we got an exact replica of our box right here. And that, once again, this is an RV electrical connection box. This is rated for 30 amps. We probably won't even use 15 amps. Because all we're going to do is run LED lights and an exhaust fan and possibly maybe a buffer or a uh, portable heater. So I'm sure 30 amps is more than enough. All right. Now, I just got done mounting this box on here. And you can see where the cord will come up here and then it will plug in there. And then I was going to come in here and run air line all the way down the wall and all the way over to there. But then I decided, you know, that's a waste of time. There's a lot of fittings. What happened to us when we did the air inside the shop? Disaster. The more connections you got twisted together, the more, the more chance you got of leakage. leakage. Now kind of picture yourself walking down the outside of the building. And then you can see right here where um, all my air filters will hook up to this. Just like that. Now many went ahead and got all the insulation done. And we ran into a situation we had to take the corners out because once I put this panel up here, I don't have any way to screw another panel going this way. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm going to be kind of screwed on that. So what I had to do is if we look right here, this is 16 gauge metal that is bent to a 90. Is that a 90? Yes, that is. Yes. So I had to get 10 of these, which cost me $230, plus traveling expenses to Grand Junction, Colorado. Did I uh, tell you how much this was costing us? I could have went and just bought a paint booth and put it in a fucking building, okay? I could have done that. I should have done that. I should have bought a, 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 a small paint booth, put it in the building, and then if we ever sell this place, Go buy a fucking panel for the roof, take it out, and put a new panel on the roof. That's what I should have done. But he didn't do it because I suggested it. And why would he do anything that his wife would suggest? Why? I don't know.
So to look at it in a happy way, um, I don't know how much was the installation. I don't even fucking remember. That was like what, 800 bucks or something, 700 dollars. We dropped the ceiling. Look at all the expense that was. People are asking me right now, why did you drop the ceiling? Why didn't you just leave it like it was? I would have had to insulate all of that in there. It would have been 10 times harder. Tell them how hard it was to put this ceiling up. Was it easy? Was it easy? Yes or no? No, it wasn't. It was a bitch. It took two days to put this fucking ceiling up. So we got the ceiling up. Then he had to get up inside the attic and uh, put all the insulation there. She's got to go back up there now because what we're doing now is we're electrifying the place. We're putting electricity on it, okay? That's what we're doing. Am I right? So, what we got over here, I'm sorry, you didn't turn around quick enough. Camera girl, Minnie. Yeah. So, what we got over here is I got an elbow that you can purchase and, and, and already buy where you don't need to go buy a, uh, uh, what is that, a pipe bender. I went ahead and cut this off. This is a plate. This is that 16 gauge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this right here, just like that. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my electrical box. And what this is going to do, this is going to give me the action where I'll be able to mount my box on that. Once the box is mounted, then we can come over here. We'll get some uh, Romex. All right. We'll run Romex from here up to here. And voila, looky there. It's a done deal. Why did you buy a whole roll of Romex when you could buy it by the foot? I didn't buy a whole roll. Yeah. You're talking about black wire? Yeah. You're talking the 10 gauge black wire? I don't know what it okay, is, the black it, wire that I bought, it's mini. Just going from okay, because what you're doing now, you're yeah. jumping around like a bunny yeah, rabbit. Well, okay, you're, you're, you're jumping around. That ain't the wire I'm using on this. Okay. Okay, but you're jumping around uh, like from start to finish in, you know, less than three seconds. We'll see where that wire goes when we get to that. All right. <coughs> I got this insulation. See, it's coming in my... <coughs> <laughs> oh, so you're going to go ahead and laugh at me. You're saying it's fake. Uh, look in the air, okay, when you do this. Look in the air. What happened when you were doing it? I need a mat. Where's my mat? I want my mat. Oh, we're going to have to go to town and get a soda on that one. So once I get this mounted, this is kind of technical. What we're going to do... Very technical. Is what we'll do is Everything we will. Everything we do is very technical. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll run that up here, and then I'm only going to have one light switch and one plug. That's all we need in here. That's it. That's it. Uh, if I sell this place, you know, good riddance. The owner can do whatever the fuck he wants with this. But tear it down. I'm hoping in the long run that this is going to be a good investment. <laughs> and I think by what we're doing. It will be more of a better investment doing this in the long run than putting a paint booth in there and ruining the shop. So I'm kind of looking at the deal long term. Um, so we'll have the light switch here like this, if many can kind of see that. And then we'll have the electrical outlet. We only need one electrical outlet. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the intake and exhaust later. So let me finish this wiring. We're going to put LED lights on the walls. I hopefully I have enough to put a couple on the ceiling. And I think that I think it'll all work out. And uh, it's going to be a nice paint booth. It's just a very expensive paint booth. More expensive than I thought. How about you?
right. Beautiful day in Moab, Utah. Let's go see what's happening in Pete's new paint booth. Our almost paint booth. Gonna be a paint booth when it grows up. Yeah. Yeah. Look what we got here. We got a mess. What have we got? Well, that's okay. It'll give character to the building. This is our airline hookup. It goes right here, see? I'll show you what I've been doing. So this is going to go on here like that. Yeah. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And then if you look right there. Oh, that'll hook that up goes to on that here. red thing. Yeah. So I got my water, my uh, micro super fine water trap here. Yeah. And it goes through that, and then it comes out to that. So. It comes out there. And then that's, of course, is a very expensive. That's like 800 bucks for that. So okay. I don't think we're going to get any water or oil in our paint jobs here. Um, this ceiling was a very, very big nightmare. Yeah. Uh, come on back here. I want to show everybody something. You're not going to believe this. you got to see it in person to understand. If you look at this back wall here, that's 16 feet. From side to side. Okay, now it doesn't look like 16 feet. It doesn't look like this room 16 feet tall, but I'm going to show you and I'm going to tell you and you're going to go, wow. And you might leave a comment that says, wow. Let's go in there. I want to show you the Let's situation. Let's see how many wows we can get. Yeah. <laughs> now, wow, before wow. we go inside, from the ground up to the top of the roof there, uh, and I'm talking where the icicles are and the snow is coming over, that's 16 feet. Okay, that's 16 feet. Does everybody see this panel right here? I'm going to go stand next to it. Stay there. Maybe the body shop girl. This is a panel. This was the extra panel I had to order to cut that much of it off to finish out that wall. And you can see, alright, that's 16 feet. Jeez, wow! So, don't let this little building fool you, okay? It might look small from the outside, <laughs> but don't, don't think it's a small building because let me show you something here. That's 16 feet from that wall to that wall. Yeah, we put those up in single pieces, right. wall to wall. Yeah. yeah. I tell you what though, that was easier though than the 20 yeah. footers. Well, those aren't 20 feet. Those were only 16. Oh, those are only 16 yes, feet? Yes, they're only 16 oh, feet. Let me tell you, those were very difficult to get up. Actually, those are 16 feet, 9 inches. <laughs> what we got to do is we got to start putting our walls up. Yeah. Now, we're gonna do this I'm having first. a feeling, since the exhaust fan is going to be over here, and it's going to be sucking this way, that I should put this panel on first, okay, and then overlap this one so this one will be on the top. Does that make sense? Yes. And then that way, when the wind is blowing the debris, the overspray, and everything else, you know, sucking, it will slide down the panel and instead of inside, getting okay. stuck inside if it was going that way. Right. Now, if we look up here, you can see where I had to add that on. Yeah. And we did not do that up there. We didn't do that up there. But that's going to be way up there. I'm talking about down here low. All right. But you see what we're talking about. When the wind's blowing, it can get stuck in those little grooves there. And then when you come across a paint job uh, or precise thing, it can get a little dust falling out of there yeah, and then it's going to build up and then it could build so up. So what we're going to have to do up there is we'll have to come back maybe the body shop room so we'll have to caulk all that in. So to prevent that on the walls, if we start from this end over here, all right, and work that way, all right, then yeah. we can have the paint because the wind's happen. always going to be blowing that way. Right, right. Um, I had a lot of questions asking... What are you going to do in the summer? What are you going to do when it's hot, real hot? What are you going to do in the winter? Do you see this insulation I'm putting up, guys? 
do you see behind the insulation um, the Don't vapor pull that off. okay the vapor barrier that we got yeah in the summertime this place should be approximately 30 degrees cooler inside here than it is outside um, it should be 20 to 30 degrees 20 I'd say 25 degrees warmer in here in the winter than it is outside due to this insulation we had the heater inside our building with the door shut and it was freezing ass cold out that day it was about 17 degrees we put the heater in here and it took approximately less than five minutes to get this place at 80 degrees this so room. hot you can't even breathe okay it was it was very so i'm not going to have any problems with <coughs> Damn insulation got in my throat. You gotta be careful of that stuff. It's very dangerous getting in your lungs. One good thing about this, look, it's form formaldehyde free, so I'm safe, I guess. Uh, so anyway, back to the story. Um, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start putting some panels up. Uh, we had a hell of a time putting these panels in. Look what happened over here. Oh, yeah. And we can't leave it like that because if we leave it like that, then our vapor barrier will be ruined. And we lost our aluminum tape, so Minnie's been using the vinyl tape. So I'm going to go ahead and let her do that. And uh, there you go. 101 paint booth room. I think it's going to work out really nice. I think it's going to be an awesome paint booth. We got the electrical hooked up. Let us get our panels up. We're kind of giving you a walkthrough as we're working. What are you doing? Getting back over here. All right. Take two. We're kind of getting a walk. We're, we're giving you a walkthrough on this. We're not giving you a detailed how-to type video. Um, this building was very expensive for me. If we look at this line right here, this is where I had to have concrete added from here all the way back. All right, and that was two thousand dollars. Of course, he put the concrete here and they went that way with it as well, all the way to that other door. But that was $2,000 for that. I'm hoping and praying to God that this concrete doesn't fall off. Because the guy that did the concrete work on this was a real, real shady character. And that's another situation you have when you do this type of a deal is you run into a lot of shade action characters. Am I right? Sometimes. So... Um, we thought we were going to use 52 bags of insulation, but it seems like uh, we're going to have about 15 bags left over, so that's good. It's always better when you're doing something like this, buy more than you need, keep your receipt, take it back, and get a refund. It saves you a lot of time and a lot of trips. I'm going to go ahead and start getting panels in here while Minnie gets that done, and then we got to get the insulation up, and then panels to start going up. And we're going to go from there, this way, and then maybe the body shop girl will do the caulking.